Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of the video, I'll have earned your subscription. And to everyone who's watching, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button. It's a great way to show support without having to spend any money. And if you really, really like my videos and would like to help support the channel financially so I can keep making these videos, you can click the thanks button down below and leave a tip in the amount that you want. Or you can visit my eGuitar Plans web store. There's a link in the description below. Or you can visit the Highline Guitars merch store, which is displayed below the description for this video. There you can purchase items and help support this channel financially. And know that every purchase you make will help to support the channel and you'll be getting something in return. So what I'm going to be talking about today is I'm going to answer or try to answer a couple of questions that have come to my channel recently, and both of these questions are about essentially the same thing. How do you level a scalloped fretboard before you level the frets? Well, unfortunately, there really isn't a reliable way that I'm aware of that you can use to check the level of your scalloped fretboard. And it has to do with the fact that the scallops from one uh, or from fret to fret are probably not going to be consistent in their depth. Certainly not in their, their size, but the depth is what's important. And because they aren't consistent, it can be difficult to check to see if the entire fretboard is level. Uh, what you can do is use one of the same tools that we use for checking the level of a regular uh, fretboard that doesn't have scallops, and that is to use one of these notched straight edges. The one I have has notches for two different scales. Um, one is marked long guitar scale, and that's for 25 and a half inches, and the other is uh, marked for short guitar scale, which is 24 and three quarter. So on this guitar, which has a 25 and a half inch scale length, I use the long scale length side of the notch straight edge. The notches go over the frets, and then the uh, straight edge contacts the fretboard along the center line. And what I'm looking for is either gaps at the ends or at the center. If the gap is at the center, that's up bow. If it's at the ends, that's back bow. So I can check that and if I, if I see either one of those situations, I can adjust the truss rod to level the fretboard out. And I'll do this before I start to level the frets. Now, I'm not going to get into the reasons why I like to level frets with a straight fretboard or a flat fretboard. Um, I've talked about this in other videos before. In fact, I'll post a link uh, up above to a video where I talk about the reasons why I do that. There are a lot of different philosophies and it's kind of controversial. Some folks like the fretboard to be dead level like I do. Others like to either simulate string tension to induce some relief at the center or they will actually level the frets with the strings on and tuned to pitch because um, they can use certain types, a specific type of tools to help uh, level the frets with the strings in place. But um, I've, I've just always had better luck with the fretboard dead level. And I know that a lot of folks prefer to do it that way as well. I can tell from other comments that I've received on uh, when I've talked about leveling frets. So, uh, but how do you check it if the fretboard is scalloped? Because obviously it would seem a tool like this isn't gonna work because these edges don't conform to the shape of the scallop. Well, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. And um, one way is the same, and actually all the ways that I'm gonna talk about are, are uh, borrowed from checking the level on just a normal fretboard. Uh, one way is to put a capo at the first fret and then press the string down at the last fret and then look for a gap along the, the string, either gaps at the ends or at the center. However, that only works if you're looking for up bow because when you capo that string at the first fret and then press it down to the last fret, if there's up bow, which is also uh, relief, you'll see the gap at the center. 
and then you'll know that your fretboard isn't level. However, if the neck suffers from back bow, when you press the strings down to the first and the last fret, it's going to conform to that back bow and you're not going to be able to see it. There aren't going to be gaps at the ends that help to show you that there's a uh, back bow existent or present in the neck that needs to be addressed before you can level your frets. Now the other way is if, and this only works if the fretboard was glued to the neck, you will have a glue seam where the two different pieces of wood meet. What you can do is you can take a straight edge and I would recommend using a precision straight edge like this one, but if you don't have one, you can, for the sake of just checking this neck really quickly, just use a regular straight edge. And you, you, you would do is you would place it right down onto that glue seam at both ends. And then you would look to see if you have any gap, or I shouldn't say gap, if it's bent if or curved in either either in a, an up bow or a back bow situation and you can kind of tell now that's going to tell you that the neck itself isn't level it's not really going to tell you if the surface of the fretboard is level because you're measuring the seam and not the actual surface of the fretboard so the last way, and this is the way that I've done in the past, and, and I have to be honest here, I've only done a couple of scallop fretboards. And in fact, I was thinking about that as I was making this video. It's probably been almost 10 years since I did my last scalloped fretboard. And I did that by hand, carving the scallops. And it worked out pretty well, but it was at that time that I realized just how difficult it is to work with scalloped fretboards. Now that I have a CNC machine, I can actually carve a scalloped fretboard very precisely so I don't have to worry about inconsistencies with the depth of the scallops from fret to fret. At any rate, if you have a scalloped fretboard, you can use a notched straight edge to see if the fretboard is level. And you would simply place it on the fretboard just like you would um, if it was just a regular fretboard that didn't have scallops. But what you're looking at is you're looking to see where the fretboard is contacting these little corners at the notches. It's not going to be contacting in the center, obviously, because of the U-shaped scallop, but it will contact at those edges. So what you're doing is you're going to be looking to see where that contact is with each fret as you kind of glance along the length of the fretboard. And if you notice any gaps where those corners aren't touching the fretboard, then you can tell that you might have a state of either up bow or back bow and then can correct with the truss rod before you start to level your frets. You know, unfortunately there, there aren't any tools specifically made for checking a scalloped fretboard to make sure it's level. And I think that just goes to show that they aren't as common. And I, like I said, I haven't made one for a lot of years, so my experience with them isn't as extensive as somebody who makes them every single day. So if you're one of those guys who has a lot of experience at, at scallop fretboard, uh, I would uh, ask that you leave a comment down below about how you check to see if the fretboard is level. Uh, maybe you know of some tools or techniques that I'm not aware of and can share those with the rest of the audience. Um, now, I'm not saying that I'm against scallop fretboards. I certainly am not. Uh, I can definitely see their value for guitar players. However, making them and then leveling frets and everything can be a bit of a challenge. Now, I may revisit these uh, a scallop fretboard in the near future on a guitar because with my CNC machine, I can actually carve a perfectly shaped scallop fretboard. So uh, that's something to that may happen down the road. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see. At any rate, I hope that you found this video to be useful. And again, if you have any thoughts or comments on it, please leave them down in the comment section below. And as always, um, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for future episodes.